thought they were going to go undefeated the rest of the way. I mean this when I say it. They should look into fire and keep. <laughs> I know. Anyway, for real, the last time the Leafs won three straight, they followed it up by losing six straight, and I'm scared. Me too, dude. Me too. The trauma Maple Leafs. Hi, kids. Victorious puppies. Huh? This team is ruining my life. Why do I watch hockey? Stress relief. Okay. We can and we will. Leafs lose basically five to four, were it not for a full length of the arena dart from Jack Eichel, six four to the Buffalo Sabres. Rather than go through the game bit by bit, let's talk about the subject that everyone's talking about on Hockey Twitter tonight, which is the Leafs backup goalie situation. So obviously a bit of a unique situation. It's a back to back, but it's also a home and home with Buffalo. So this is an advantage for the Leafs. It's an opportunity to uh, experiment. And I don't mean an advantage over Buffalo. I'm talking the next night they're not gonna to be the tired team versus arrested one. So the whole thing with Mike Babcock is this is just the way we do it. This is just the way we do it. And he would never deviate from it. He would always have Freddie play the first game, secure the two points. They didn't always do that. And then they would basically almost always surrender the next two points. Last year it was pretty bad, but it wasn't this bad. They don't have a win on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. Michael Hutchison still does not have a win. The closest he has come to it is a 5-4 shootout loss to the Montreal Canadiens in his first start. By the way, the Leafs were up 4-1 in the third in that game. But what frustrated me is when the Leafs very obviously had pretty meh team on the first night murderers on the second night. And night after night, they just sent Hutchison out to the slaughter. So Sheldon Keefe continues his basically looking intentional troll job by starting Hutchison on the first half of this back-to-back. -back. First and foremost, why Hutchison and not Kasky Squall? Sheldon Keefe said players were consulted before the Leafs recalled Michael Hutchinson. We talked to a number of players to get their perspective on the situation. They felt he deserved another opportunity and they were excited to get a chance to play in front of him again. Well, that's interesting. All right, the players who have basically been on a mission for the past three games to prove everyone wrong, hey, leave this to us, we're going to be fine, it makes sense that they want to play in front of their guy who they began the season with. And it's fair. I saw a bunch of people go, what? He hasn't earned anything. He has at very least earned the opportunity to fail. Everyone playing on this roster got their little shot at redemption with Keefe as the coach instead of Babcock, and they got to play on a team that is playing differently. Hutchison was never put in a position to succeed under Babcock, and I know, oh, the backup plays the second half of the back-to-back. -back. Okay, well, here's your shot. The team looks different. You're being put in a position to succeed. The team is fresh as a daisy. Go for it. The opportunity is yours. There's more. Sheldon Keefe explains the decision to start Hutchison tomorrow. Hutch used to afternoon, 4 p.m. starts in the AHL. That is true. Early start, short travel means Freddie can have normal game day routine on Saturday. Hey, that's great. Maybe they can secure the two points on Saturday. Team doesn't have win in second half of a back-to-back -back game yet. That three-thing list is fantastic. Here's how it benefits Hutchinson. Here's how it benefits Freddie. By the way, the way we've been doing it is not working. The logic is Beautiful. None of this just trust me, I know better stuff. It's, hey, here's some of our reasoning for our decisions. It's a lot less infuriating than, well, it's just what we do. What, lose? So here you go, man. It's your shot of redemption. You're back up with the team. You're in a position to succeed. Let's go. <laughs> Hutchison lets in five goals and the Leafs lose six to four. And unfortunately, it's the same old story. John Tavares gives the Leafs a two nothing lead. Well, that's not the same old story. The Leafs weren't getting any leads, so at least they at least scored in the first period, which we're not used to. John Tavares, how good has he been since I said he was going to get the crown on the podcast, right? And Hutchison in the first period, jeez, uh, this guy looks good. But how many times have we seen that? We've seen stretches of Hutchinson being good. Hutchinson is the Leafs in one person, or at least the Babcock Leafs to start the season in one person. Hey, they look fine. They look fine. Oh, about five and a half minutes into the second period, Michael Hutchinson throws the puck up the board to the blue line, not out. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but I've played hockey for exactly like five months, so I'm an expert now. Here's how you're supposed to play the puck if you're a goalie. Step one, don't. Step two, be a goalie. I know that is an unfair blanket statement, and it is not nearly true, but dude! Now granted, 
I don't know exactly what the heck Travis Dermott and Tyson Berry think they're doing here. Yeah, it's a scoring chance, but like, it's just kind of a shot. All right, it's Jeff Skinner. Yeah, he's got a really good shot. Okay, fine. Yeah, okay, fine. And they're still winning. It's fine. A few minutes later, Jack Eichel coming out of the penalty box. It's a bit of a fortunate bounce for the Sabres, but whatever. Here they come. Jack Eichel comes in. It's just kind of a shot, man. It's all, oh, it's just a shot. It's a Jack Eichel shot. It, yeah. He's an NHL player. They have Jack Eichels in the NHL. The middle stat 3-2 goal, I got nothing to say about that. That's, that's a wicked tip. Before the end of the second, Jack Eichel behind the Leafs net. I, I don't really think Spezza should have been going there, but he did. Olison's got a great shot. Oh, he's a goal scorer. Man. So now we're at three, all right? Skinner, great shot. Eichel, great shot. Olison, great shot. Any of them? Well, yeah, but if you go back through the plays, you were even saying that the Leafs are bad defensively and they were giving up scoring chances. That's the gig! If you didn't need goalies to cover up for your defensive mistakes, it would just be six on six! Ask yourself this, do you ever want the other team to have a shot against your team? No! Why would you want them to have that? Of course not! The shot might go in! They might score a goal! They might end up with more goals than you, and that's how you lose! Sports! Well, guess what? The other team is gonna get a shot 25, 30, 35, 40 times a game! And due to a variety of unforeseen circumstances and oopsies, some of them are pretty good! Stop a couple! Now let me be the first to say, the Leafs defensively in this game Easily their worst under Keefe. They were a dog's breakfast in their own zone. And the fact that they said the players actually vouch for Hutchison, please give this guy another chance. We want a chance to play in front of this guy again. The fact that they vouch for him and still played that poorly in front of him is a slap in Hutchison's face. But goals against in Michael Hutchison. NHL starts this season. Five, four, four, five, five, five. Ah. Uh, and Timoshov scores to get one back. Yeah. Matthews gives it away immediately, and he had a terrible game in this one. And I saw some people saying, oh, Hutchison didn't have a chance on any of those. Five hole like the Cave of Wonders from Aladdin. Who disturbs my slumber? Now, we all know what happens after that. Kasperi Kapanen scores. Holy smokes, they're still in this thing. They might actually die it. No, they don't. Empty net goal, the Leafs lose. Let me pull myself back. This is not Michael Hutchinson's fault. You get what you pay for. The guy is a league minimum goal. Do you understand? If he's good, it's a surprise. If he's good, it's a diamond in the rough situation. He's playing better than the money he makes. I know I'm ripping on the guy, but the Leafs are getting what they paid for. This is on the Leafs. I know the team plays like garbage in front of them. I thought that was just the second half of back-to-backs. Apparently they just play like garbage in front of them. Or damn, maybe they play like garbage all the time and Freddie is just that good. But I think if the Leafs did genuinely vouch for Michael Hutchinson, please give this guy another chance. If they genuinely vouch for him, you can't base it all on one game. You give him one more though. One more, because at this point, we're running out of runway. We're running out of season, and we're running out of back-to-backs. We're running out of points to cough up in the standings here. Do they give another opportunity to Kasky Swo? Maybe, before they make a trade, maybe. I've seen a lot of Leafs Twitter like, oh, go out and get Eric Comrie. Oh, ah, man. Former second round pick, that's good. He's under 25, that's good. AHL numbers are good. NHL numbers, every time he's gotten an opportunity, he's gotten shelled. But he's cheap, and it's an option. It's an option, like at, at this point, the Leafs, they, all they have are cheap options. I saw a few people say Louis Domingue. They literally can't afford him. I think they tried before the Devils got him, by the way. He's a devil. If the Leafs are going to get a backup, and I still think they need to, forget the back-to-backs. Freddie cannot be playing every damn game. They're going to have to trade off their roster. The good news is I think there are parts to trade. I mean, especially on the wing, holy smokes. We've been talking about how deep the Leafs are on the wing, and I think they're even deeper than we thought. Patan's hustle on the fourth goal. Timoshov's banger on the third goal. Trevor Moore's not even in the lineup right now. Pierre Engvall is a player. And ah yes, they have that character Mitch Marner who's not even in the lineup right now. There are trades to be made, I suppose, but you're either looking at like a league min or close to league min goalie, or you gotta get a good goalie who's making some money while you trade a player off your roster. Now how many teams around the league are like totally take our good goalie? Not a ton. That's why if any of you yelled at the screen when I said give Michael Hutchinson at least one more game, it's actually one of the more sane options they have left. 
Now, the Leafs take on the Buffalo Sabres at home with Freddie Anderson in net. He gets to play behind a tired Leafs team. Now you get to see what it's like there, Freddie. And there is one player in particular who is going to be in the lineup on Saturday in Toronto in front of Freddie Anderson who owes his team for the performance he had in Buffalo, and that's Austin Matthews, man. Because he has visibly been loving it since Babcock's been let go, since Keefe's behind the bench. Tyson Berry's first goal, loving it, loving it loving that they won three straight games. Who wouldn't? And one of the number one complaints about Babcock, guy doesn't play Matthews enough. Matthews played under 20, I think it was under 18 minutes in game seven against Boston, a game that they were losing almost the entire time. What? So Sheldon Keefe goes out in a limb and he plays him nearly 25 minutes and he was Awful. I thought he was all right in the offensive zone, but dude, the arena has two ends, man. And if you really want to split hairs, you're willing to forgive everything from the first two periods, even two and a half periods. You could argue he cost them the game with that brutal giveaway in the slot on what ended up being the game winning goal. Matthews has got to redeem himself. He's got home ice advantage, and I assume he's got Carter Hutton in net. You put that puck through the thing, Austin. And I tell you what, I'm going to that game. Jesse and I are going to that game. We're going to be sitting between the benches. So you're going to see uh, Jesse all the way up here, up in the clouds. And you're going to see the top of my head. And I hope we see an Austin Matthews hat trick. Wouldn't that be nice? By the way, his first NHL hat trick was in his first NHL game. He doesn't have one since. That doesn't take away from the fact that he's an amazing goal scorer. Like, I, that means literally nothing. I know he has one at a preseason game. Who cares? It was in Rico Coliseum also. Actually, now that I think of it, the first one was in Ottawa. The second one was in Rico. Austin Matthews has never scored a hat trick at the, well, in Scotiabank Arena. I almost called it the ACC. You know what, dude? I want to see it. I want to see it! Literally front row seats! I want to see it against Buffalo! Now that's bonus. I will settle for a solid all-around performance and two points in the standings. Questions? Is Nick Robertson a defenseman? Are you, are you serious, Peterborough? Nick Robertson is a defense... Uh, forward! Forward! and also a good person. Thanks to Steve Dangle. This is my Nick Robertson impression for some reason. And everyone who bought one of these <laughs> Nick Robertson as a forward shirts, we raised $300 for Autism Ontario Peterborough. To say thank you, I'm going to personally donate 50 cents for every like this tweet gets up to 500 bucks. And then boom, thanks everyone for your support. That's $800 donated to Autism Ontario Peterborough. To further support them or to learn more about their cause, visit AutismOntario.com. Thank you very much to Nick. I, I am very grateful that my stupidity has gone towards a good cause and that you ponied up uh, for a worthy cause. Thank you, Nick, and thank you to the Peterborough Peets, to Mara Burns in particular, uh, for the idea. I didn't come up with that idea. I also thought he was a defenseman. I, I'm, I'm not very useful in this whole situation. Have you been getting your eyebrows done? What? Because they look phenomenal. Maybe it's just compared to the stash, though. Yeah, all right, I got the sides of my head shaved to make this stand out more. This makes these stand out more. But, like, yeah? There was a girl I had a mad crush on in grade 8, and her best friend used to always make fun of my eyebrows really loudly, and I was like, thanks! But it's okay, I ended up finding a nice girl and getting married, and she hasn't looked at me for almost a month because of this abomination. I am shaving the nanosecond I get home Saturday night. Movember, down below the link, please. I'm trying to just, just give me money, I hate this thing! Assuming we have to give up an asset or assets to free up space to acquire a solid backup goaltender, who gets dealt? Uh, that's a really tough one because all the guys I mentioned, Patan, Timoshev, Engvall, Moore, None of them make any money, really. So trading any of them doesn't really do anything. Oh, trading Nick Shore, that doesn't do anything. So trading any of them doesn't really do anything to the cap situation, or Shore, or Spezza, or Goat. But the interesting, and because I'm sick, I'm gonna throw it out there, fun thing about the Leafs and any trade is they kinda have to make a person-for-person -person trade. They can't really just trade a pick. They pretty much have to have cap going out to bring any cap in. This is probably gonna be unpopular. Uh, people have been talking about, oh, trade William Nylander or this or that. 
Ah, Kerfoot. I'd obviously like to see how he does under Sheldon Keefe, and I'm not even saying he's a bad player, but he does make three and a half million dollars. Listen, you asked me for ideas. You didn't ask for good ones. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends that I'm going to be at the game tomorrow. Jesse is going to be very tall between the benches. Link down below for my Movember page, uh, and I'm going to throw it out there. The Marner Jar. It's still a thing.